I am so happy to be here, Tom Power. I have got to tell you, you know, as much as your voice is in my house every day, well, every weekday, I don't know how come you don't live there. <laughs> I don't, between you and Matt Galloway, I'm like, I don't understand. How come they're, I'm not married to them. What's going on? I can't afford the rent. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on this thing. Thank you it's, very much. It's really good. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's, I, people, I haven't seen an episode yet. None of the What do you mean you yet. haven't seen it? We haven't seen it. Are you episode. telling me that I've seen it and you haven't yes, seen it? Yes. Oh, yes. good. That makes a lot of sense. Ex well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let the executives know you said that. But yeah, but people's reactions have been so positive. Yeah. Yeah. And we can finally exhale because, you know, you put everything into it when you're doing it. For people to really like it and because it's such um, it's such a legacy show, yeah. you know, you just want to do it right. Did you watch it uh, coming up? Of course I did. Who didn't? Yeah. They're not my friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you watch it like, <laughs> what were you watching? Lenny Briscoe? Yeah. I, I was watching the one with um, Essa Patha Murkison yeah. and um, Sam Waterston yeah. and Jesse L. Martin. And oh, what's his name? I can see. It will come to me. Jerry Orbach? Jerry Orbach. Yeah. That's right. And they could all sing. I don't know if Sam Waterston can sing, but I love the fact that, you know, they all came from theater and they were doing this iconic show. My God. So you were watching it. You were you were watching it when it came on TV. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so when this came around, what made you want to get involved? Well, <laughs> I am an actor and I've got bills to pay. Oh, good. Okay, so that's okay, so getting down to practicalities, that you you want a job. Yeah. But this particular job, I wanted to get involved because I knew that the Cameron sisters, uh, Tassie and Amy Cameron, were helming it. And I'd worked with them before on Pretty Hard Cases and on Mary Kills People. The, these are the producers or something? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cameron Pictures. Okay. I knew that they were involved. Um, I wanted to work on it because I knew that Canada and Toronto in particular definitely had the talent pool mm. to to fill the show mm -hmm. in the way that it needed to be filled. And so um, to be a part of that, yeah. I mean, I cannot believe how fortunate I am. In preparation for doing this role, did you go back and watch the old Law and Orders or any of the Law and Orders to see like, okay, this is how I want to approach it? No. And I, I tend not to do that because I don't want other people's performances to get into my head, to tell you the God's honest truth. Uh, and um, what I know is that if I get a well-written script, I can inject it with enough of myself and my experiences and the people that I know and the stuff that I've read and the stuff that I've watched throughout the years to make it mine. So, no, I didn't I, I didn't have to go back and watch The Law and Orders because they were already in me. Yeah. I mean, how many years has it been since 1990? Yeah. So, 24 years, well, 23 at the point that we were shooting this. 23 years no, of law. Yeah. No, 33. Stop. Yeah. Oh, it's SVU. Yeah. That is, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Exactly. 1990 be 30. Th Oh my God! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know why I can't do that? Because I can't believe that Me it's neither. been thirty years since nineteen ninety. I'm like I'm not that old, but I'm actually I, I am. my knees are definitely that old. I don't even like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this character. <laughs> what, what's she like? What do we need to know about her? How do you? What are you thinking about? Oh, I think that Vivian Holness has been in the um, in law enforcement. I can see her as a beat cop back in the early nineties, maybe even the late eighties. I can see that she had her eye on the prize, but she knew that she'd have to work damn hard to get there. And she has. I mean, I imagine what it must have been like for her as a black person, as a woman coming up um, and the blow she would have had to take in order to make it to to this level. And um, this is hard earned. Her her level of inspector is hard earned, and um, there's a lot of responsibility on her plate. But she's brought this crack team together of uh, Graf and Bateman, each of whom has very a very different set of talents. Yeah, and uh, but together they are um, they're amazing together. And I actually I I think that I did that deliberately that they would be able to fill each other's um, gaps so in you, order to get the work done. So when you're approaching this character, you're thinking this is somebody who um, needs to work twice as hard. 
this is somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> I to, uh, three times. I'm just saying that because they, they can't see an eye roll on the radio. <laughs> 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 I will say three times as hard. Yes, she so, does. So you're, th- you're approaching this character as someone who works th- three times as hard, who who, who may not necessarily feel uh, uh, represented in the Toronto Police Service, mm-hmm. feels all eyes are, are on her, mm-hmm. sort of feels the weight of the, the world on her. That's There's how, a that's how lot you... of responsibility on her. At the same time, I mean, she has to remain in the present because the, the work, the present case and every other case that is on her plate because you can imagine that it's never just one case it's not the case that you're watching on tv she has a lot more on her plate everything has to get done so it's that double uh, it's a double pressure right of the stuff that has to get done today but also the people that she has to answer to were, were there people you were thinking about when you were approaching this role and you know oh, there's so many people i keep a picture of my mother on, on my desk. My mother passed away in 2020. I'm sorry. And I keep, oh, thank you. And I, I've heard you talk about your dad, so mm-hmm. I know that you understand. Yeah. Um, so I, I think of my mother. I think of my sisters are also both in leadership positions. My father was. Um, and Leadership uh, positions? Leadership positions like, you know, my sister uh, worked in banking. She was a vice president. Yeah. Um, uh, my other sister is a doctor and head of her department. Yeah, my father was the head of surveys for the for the government of Jamaica. My mother was a veteran um, uh, uh, registered nurse. So when you start, when when you get to those levels, there are unfortunately there are usually people who um, who are who make it their life's work to bring you back down because you know because of that age old question: Who the hell do you think you are? Um, for all kinds of reasons. And um, yeah, I I know what they went through and I can feed that into the portrayal of Vivian. And actually the name Vivian comes from one of my sisters. It's one of my sister's middle names. Yeah, they let me choose my name. They let you choose your character's name. They let me choose my character's name. And you named it after your your sister's middle name? After one of my sisters, yeah. Uh, Because... Because you, you've seen what your sisters and your family has, has gone uh, through. Because I've seen what she's gone through and because, um, and, and, and because I love my sister and because I love to inject anything I do with the people who mean the most to me. So I actually gave them a selection of names yeah. and that was the one that the higher ups chose. You know, you can tell that the show is going to, um, how do I put this? You can tell that the show is 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 going to be a complicated show. Mm-hmm. Go on. Okay. <laughs> well, for one, uh, the 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 whole premise of Law and Order, yeah, is that it's ripped from the headlines. Yes. So you get you get. When I was watching the first episode, I was thinking to myself, "Oh, I kind of remember a story like that yeah. happen, happening here in Toronto." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've, I've had a look at some of the upcoming episodes, and mm-hmm. I'm like, "Oh, I see." I've, how, does that change how you approach this role, knowing that these are real issues? These are real. I feel like there's so, especially with you know social media and the way information comes at us anymore. We're um, there is it's like a glut of news stories that yeah. we ha- that we hold all the time, and sometimes we have to clear stuff out in order to let other things in. So some of those stories I actually forgot about, yeah. and I found that um, that being reintroduced to the to them. I I was able to um, I was able to revisit. It was sort of like therapy because I was able to revisit these stories and how I felt in the time, and um, and you know where I am now and have I really processed the information or the wrong that I thought that was done and justice that I thought was never served. Like, so, hold on, what do you mean by that? Like, any in particular you're talking? I don't know if you can get into specifics. I, I, I actually can't get yeah. into, I won't get into specifics mm-hmm. because I don't think it would serve the audience to know what is what is coming up. But, um, but suffice to say that when we say ripped from the headlines, I think that people will recognize yeah. uh, these stories, especially people in Toronto. And, um, and I also think that what they'll appreciate is it's not a documentary. It's not a straight retelling. Yeah. Of course, there are, 
has been, uh, you know, um, uh, creative license taken mm -hmm. with these stories because at the end of the day, it has to be entertaining. But what I'm saying is that, you know, it's been years since some of these things have happened. Yeah. And and so when I read the script and I and and I realize the story that it's telling, what it's what it's been, um, what the inspiration story was. Yeah, yeah, I get to I I get to go back there and say, my God, we've been through a lot. Yeah, I mean, not to mention in, uh, doing a police procedural set in Toronto in yeah. in 2024. Mm. Very different than doing one and say like when Law and Order first came out in 1993. That's right. You know, yeah. uh, there's been um, there's been uh, higher instances of, of people calling out uh, police services across this country, yeah. including in Toronto, yeah. for uh, sy uh, systemic racism, yes. for uh, unnecessary uh, violence, use of force. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can tell from looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you're not in your head. This has been on your mind a little bit as you've been approaching it, it this. It really has. It really has. Because um, I, I, I would be disingenuous if I didn't say that one of the things that I think about is how um, how my community, my black community, feels about um, law enforcement here in Toronto and how the members of... of um, uh, the members of the Toronto Police Service, the black members, I should say, how they feel about having to do their jobs and having to do their jobs in um, in a just way, in a um, in a way that is compassionate and empathetic and fair. Um, it is complicated that way, it, you know, and um, it's a it's a very fine line that we uh, that we tread. We're trying to negotiate because we want to be honest about the relationships, um, about the um, about the suspicion that mm -hmm. is there in between the, uh, between the two sides, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, the those two sides have to live with each other and how do you find where the how do you find the way to do that um so that both sides can be the best of themselves yeah, yeah. So, you, so you can be so you can be honest in in representation yeah yeah yeah. And complicated, yeah. right? Because it's not easy. Yeah. And there's no way to tie it up with a pretty pink bow at the end. That's kind of what I was getting at when yeah. I started when I started by saying to you. Right. I can tell this is gonna be a complicated Yeah. Now when I say complicated, maybe the word I mean is nuanced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, and at this point, I mean, we have 10 episodes. We have 10 stories to tell. So you don't, we, you know, characters have to be established. And Toronto is its own character that has to be established. So at this point, I wouldn't say that there is a lot of room to get really, to really exc uh, excavate yeah. those uh, those nuances. But I think we'll get there. Uh, listen, I, what I, all, I'm, all I was curious about, yeah. it was just how you were feeling about it. And I think I got that. You know, I understand it. Okay. You know? Yeah. All which right, which is that it's, it's, it's complicated. It is. It's absolutely complicated. Me, yeah. I love taking, I love telling complicated stories, I mean, to you, tell you the truth. I think you always have. My, my guest is Karen Robinson, who plays Inspector Vivian Holness on the new Law & Order uh, spinoff based in Toronto. Drum Heller, Alberta? Yes, sir. What do you want to say about Drumheller, Alberta? It's a beautiful place. You should go visit. Excuse me, I'm a Newfoundlander. Like, I'm, I my, my second home is Alberta. You know, like, oh, you know I what I mean? You. Like, I you know, hear you. half my graduating class is Alberta. I got, no, <laughs> I have no, I have no beef with Alberta. Are you kidding me? I love Alberta. <laughs> so do I. I do, and you know, I still have family out there. I get out there once, maybe twice a year, and um, yeah, it's another one of my homes. I have a lot of homes, and that's one of them. Uh, have we you grew up there? Born there? No, I was born in England, raised in. Jamaica. Jamaica kind of formed me. Where in Jamaica? In Kingston. Okay. When you said we're in Jamaica just then, you yeah. sounded Jamaican. <laughs> and that's not a mistake. That is not a mistake. Because, because of the you, similarity between exactly. the accents. Exactly. And the rum. There's a whole screech in the rum situation, which we won't get into. Yeah, the accent. I heard, start I heard, I've heard hands. bye. Sometimes I'll, I'll, when I say, how are you? How are you? Bye. I've had, mm. I had, I've had friends of mine who are Jamaican say like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear that a little yeah. bit. Okay, so, so Kingston in Jamaica. In Kingston, Jamaica. And then when we moved to Canada, we moved to Drumheller, Alberta, which was a, a hell of a lot different than Kingston, Jamaica. How do you mean? 
well, um, okay. <laughs> I remember, I remember getting to Drumheller and thinking, why is my skin so dry? My hair started to break, my skin started to crack because I wasn't used to, in Jamaica, you know, there's always like a sea breeze and there's a lot of humidity and whatever, so your skin is fine. But Drumheller, man, look, I should have taken out share. I should have bought shares in some kind of lotion company or something. <laughs> Vast Vaseline petroleum <laughs> jelly. You just slather yourself with that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that, there was that. There was the fact that we were sort of the pioneering black family Is that so? in Drumheller. Yeah, there were a couple of people before us, but we were like a family family. And, um, and yeah, and they didn't know what to do with us. And I, you know, I'm the kind of person where I just like walk into a situation and I'm like, okay, what's up? What are we going to do today? But, um... What I will say is that my first day of high school, you know, I'm getting, I'm going into a new situation, and I wore it wet. Did you move there for high school, or had you been in the community? No, before I, no, I, I moved there, uh, and I went into grade twelve. So it was the first day of grade twelve. So you moved from Jamaica to Drumheller, and your first day of school in Drumheller was in grade twelve. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And I decided I was going to wear my favorite T-shirt, which was a Michael Jackson T-shirt. Yeah. And so. For Suffice to say that the way I was ridiculed and laughed at, because, you know, everybody was listening to heavy metal and Michael Jackson was not somebody that they exactly put on a pedestal because, you know, he, his, yeah. they, they didn't appreciate his music. Yeah. Um, suffice to say that I never wore that T-shirt again. Oh. Yeah. So not an easy, not an easy landing. It yeah. wasn't easy. Yes, there was racism. Yes, there was, um, you know, there were the ignorant questions, you know, uh, why, did you live in huts? Did you, do you have ice cream there? It, all of that sort of thing. But I also will say this. I'm sorry, I don't, mind, I don't mean to laugh. We were just, I just caught the eyes. I just, I had never heard of the... <laughs> What, do do you between, have ice cream there? Do you have ice cream there? That's a surprising one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, and worse, you know, and worse, because for the first time in my life, I was called the N-word. All of that stuff happened. There were also people who were incredibly kind. There are also they are there were people who I am still friends with today. Um, I now really appre appreciate the um, the singular beauty of the place, um, and uh, it's where some of my family still lives. So. You know, again, complicated. Complicated, but uh, uh, love Drumheller, lovely, yeah. lovely part of the country, and 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 I'm, I'm glad to hear you talk about it. Is that where you started acting? Was it there? No, I started acting. Listen, I was the youngest of four children. I think I came out, realized that I had to be louder than everybody else. By the time my parents got to me, they were exhausted, so I had to be <laughs> loud in order to get anything that I wanted. Right, but, but like acting as not not acting out. In the house. I don't understand the difference. But like acting on a stage, when did that start for you? Um, I always found a stage. Like I was always, um, you know, whether it was uh, in primary school in Jamaica, in poetry contests or in choirs, that sort of thing. So there was that. And then when I was in high school in Jamaica, uh, they just decided that they were going to stick me in plays because it seemed that, you know, I was the one who could say words in the right order or something like that. I think it was destined. I think it was always meant to be. Were you acting in Alberta? Yes. Okay, so here's a story. When I got to Alberta, um, I auditioned for who does that? You just get to this school. You don't know anybody. And you're like, oh, there's a school play. I'm going to go audition for that. I auditioned for it. I got the lead role and um, ended up going. What um, play was it? Do you remember? No. God, no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I so got the lead role okay. and then ended up going to like some kind of provincial drama festival or something and winning some scholarship to go to this wonderful two-week drama camp in Vermont. Million Alberta called Arts Trek. And when I was there, I realized I was 16 years old and I, I realized that this is what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life. It was my spirit knew that it was where I belonged. Now, here's the thing. After that, when I said to my parents, and especially mummy, when I said I want to become an actor, my mother said, you can't turn one actress because the only actress I see on TV is Mad Sinclair in Trapper John M.D., and you can't be the second one. 
And I was like, okay. And she said that because she loved me, right? Mm -hmm. And probably because she didn't want me to be, you know, to live at home for the rest of my life. Yeah. But um, I did it anyway. I did it anyway. And every time I decided that I was going to go and try something else, I failed in such a spectacular way. Like what else? What and, else did you try? Uh, when I went to the University of Calgary for the first time, I decided I was going to try communication studies yeah. because in my head, it was the closest thing to, to acting, acting yeah. without being acting. Yeah. Man, oh man. At one point um, in 1988, the Olympics were in, Cal in Calgary yeah. and there was an Olympics arts festival and they were doing Porgy and Bess and I auditioned for it and I got into it. And so there were rehearsals and the whole performance the schedule and everything. And I just stopped going to university. <laughs> I just stopped. I just, I just, I just stopped for that whole time. I just stopped going. And of course, I got all kinds of yeah. all kinds of incompletes yeah. on that year because I yeah. just wasn't there. I mean, it's not lost on me uh, what you said to me earlier. I, I thought about it as soon as you said it. You said, um, you know, I, I come from a family of sort of high achievers. Yeah. Dad was a, remind me again. Ma uh, mom was a nurse. Mom, was, mom a, was a nurse. Uh -huh. And my father was the director of surveys for the government of Jamaica. My oldest sister is a banker. Um, my uh, sister, uh, my other sister is a doctor, and my brother ran his own business. So, 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 uh, what 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 strikes out to me is that is that the ability to look at that family, to look yeah. at your family, and go like, I'm gonna be an actor. <laughs> I know. I is, know. Is, is 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 it takes uh, courage. Yeah, it does. It does. I don't know if it takes. Uh, it, it's courage or it's just uh, maybe it looked like waywardness or something. Yeah. Maybe they just thought that I was out of my mind. But yeah, it, I think that I had the freedom because, you know, as the youngest child, you don't have as much pressure on you as like the older children. Right. So, hey, I'm the youngest child. I get hey, it. Hey, I get it. I get hey, it. All right. I, I get all right. It. I'm with respect. You. I'm respect. With you. I'm solidarity. With you. Yeah. So um, so you do have the freedom. You have sort of more room to explore and play and i took advantage of that you are an award-winning theater actor yes sir <laughs> yes sir i am i'm proud of that you so you should be you so you should I'm be proud of that not just high profile but very important productions in in canadian theater history like the kick of my hair mm -hmm. and harlem duet mm -hmm. so here's my question uh, when you're uh shooting a tv and film mm -hmm. does your theater background help you does it does it get in there does yes. it Without a doubt, without a How? doubt. Because in theater, you have to get multi pages of multiple pages of a scene into your body. Um, you have to understand what you want. You have to understand the arc of the scene. You have to understand the music of the scene. It takes, um, there is a muscle that has to be built and fine-tuned in order to be able to carry an entire play all at one time in the space of what? two, three hours or whatever. So by the time you get to do film and TV, the scenes are so much shorter, but you know how to pull them apart and put them back together again. That skill has already been built inside of you. So I don't mean to say that it's easy because it's not. And it's, it's, it's a slightly different set of skills for TV. But, uh, um, but what I do know is that my instinct is always to ask the question, what do I want? What am I doing in the scene? How do, what, and, and where, are, where are the twists and turns in the scenes? So, yeah, it's, I'm really thankful that I started out in theater and that I spent so much time in theater and that I'll probably go back to doing theater because I love it. Well, that, that's the, that's the, maybe that's a good way to close things off. How long, how long is a working actor now? Since, oh God, I guess it's, oh God, 1992 is when I started. So what's that? What's that? 30, oh my God, is it 30 years? What 31 you, years? Hold on, 1992, do you have it? Do you have it some? 1992? What year is it? 2024? 32 years. 32 years. 32 years. I know, I know, I know. I can't believe it either because I, like, I remember being that baby actor. My, my goal wasn't to to uh, say, hey, look how long you've been acting. But my goal is... But I feel it, Tom. This, I feel it now. This is um, this is a big moment in Canadian TV. 
this this Law and Order show. Yes, it is. This is a big moment in in, in any actor's life, and we've been talking a little bit about the road that you've been on to get yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. What's what's exciting to you about this moment right now? The most exciting thing is that my father, who is lovely and supportive and ninety three years old, and still has all his you know all his faculties. Yeah, still plays the organ and piano in church. When I went to my father and I said, Daddy, I got a job. And he's always happy when I get, when I get a job. <laughs> <laughs> he said, good. What job is it? Law and order, Daddy. You know law and order? He knew what I was talking about. That is the most exciting thing because he he's proud of my achievements, but he doesn't he doesn't know you know Shit's Creek and pretty hard cases. He hears about them. He knows his daughter is in them, but this show is something that has been in his life for a long time. Not necessarily that he's watched them, but it's in his cognitive framework that this show has existed for a long time. If my ninety three year old father knows about Law and Order. I feel like I've sort of come full circle from where he started, yeah. you know, in school, writing on a slate with chalk and yeah. everything that he's been through and everything that my mother has been through for their daughter to end up on Law and Order. I think I, I, I think this it, it might not be the pinnacle. Maybe I can. Maybe the dreams get even bigger. But it certainly is a, a point at which I can say, "Yeah, I yeah. think I, 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 I think I think I've done my ancestors proud." And in honor of that, I put a picture of my mother on my desk. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, lovely, lovely to meet you. Thank you. It's lovely to meet you Thanks too. I've wanted to do it for a long time, Tom Power. Well, I hope you set the bar low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can only go up from here. We can only go up from L lovely here. Lovely to meet you. Thanks, man. Congratulations on the show. Thank, Thank you for you coming in. Thank you very much.